Yeah, and a, a nice little fancy intro. Um, so we're going to, before we start, just let everyone know that this is going to be recorded. So it's going to be used for also Lurgus, but also other training purposes as well. So if anyone feels uncomfortable with their face being seen or anything like that, you can turn off the cameras, you can rename their names, etc. Or, you know, give us an email afterwards, but just to let you know it will be recorded and being put up on our website and used for other training purposes. So. Um, before we start then, uh, Creed is going to do an introduction of everyone in the room and go through the flow of the day as well. So. Um, okay, hi everybody. I'm going to just share my screen now. Um, so, I'm going to start just here. So hopefully you can see that. Um, so yeah, you're very welcome to the to this webinar today, um, using international communication and special education needs, um, and we're really, really grateful that you could that you could come and that you took out your time to to sit with us today, um, and just for this opportunity to share and support you any way we can. So um, we're really happy to see you. <laughs> uh, just some little housekeeping rules before we go on. Just um, if you could mute your microphone um, until the end when we'll let you know when there's time to ask questions and um, share ideas. Um, so just mute your microphone while, while someone else is speaking just to minimize background noise. Um, if something does occur to you while uh, someone is talking, um, please feel free to use the chat facility um, at, that you should see at the bottom of your screen and you can share any comments or if you want to share a link or anything, please do. Um, and this webinar is being recorded, as Carmel said, so we will have that to share with you after. And all the slides that you see, any kind of conversations that are shared in the chat, we'll share all of that with you. So don't be worrying about that. Um, and yeah, please do stick around for final questions. If you have a question or a comment that hasn't been answered or heard, um, we're, here to, we're here for that. So make sure that you get what you need by the end of it all. Um, okay, so, for, so just to let you know who's here, um, we have Carmel, who is our TCA coordinator and the Wednesday webinar coordinator for Lergus. So um, I know you, you all have been in contact with Carmel already. Um, I am one of the e-twinning coordinators in Lergus. Um, and Deirdre and Tomas are here. Um, they're the Erasmus Plus Schools team in Lergus. So we're all here to answer um, those sort of specific kind of questions that you might have um, about using the programmes. And our two panellists that we are delighted and honoured to have with us today um, we have Glenda McKeown, who is a teacher at In Our Lady of Fatima Special School, Wexford. And Glenda is an e-twinning ambassador. Um, and she's also worked very hard in Our Lady of Fatima Special School to make it an e-twinning school. So they have the flag and they have the label. Um, she's six national quality labels with e-twinning and also is an Erasmus Plus uh, beneficiary as well. And um, we have Michal Modi, who is the principal of St. Ita's Special School in Drogheda. Um, and uh, Michal has done two Erasmus Plus KA1 projects um, with Lergus. And uh, he can just share, extol the virtues of, um, of the Erasmus Plus experience with you. And I'm sure uh, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be really interested to hear uh, what he has to say. So um, this is our running order. We are already well in, so we've our housekeeping and our introductions done. And um, we're gonna hear from um, Glenda and Michal about their experience. Um, so how, what, what they took from each winning on Erasmus Plus in the context of special education. And then we'll break out into smaller groups where we can hear and chat about uh, what you have to say or any questions you have. And um, we do have a very quick little Mentimeter quiz. Um, if you would like to click on this link, if you can, hopefully that it's clickable for you. There's just a little quiz so that, that we'll try and see um, what sort of experience you have in each winning or an Erasmus Plus, if any, and it's a perfectly, perfectly fine to be brand new to this as well. So if you can click on that link, but I might just copy it into the chat um, so that you can click on it in there as well. So I'm just gonna stop sharing for a second and I'll post that into the chat. I'm done there. Sorry, I hope everybody can hear me. So anybody who's new, if you want to just click on the Mentimeter link in the chat there, just to, to share your 
um, experience so far of each winning our Erasmus Plus. And I'll bring back my screen now. Okay, hold on a second. Um, try screen. Okay. Okay, sorry. Now I'll just bring this back up. Okay, so we'll leave that for now and we'll just have we we'll be able to look at that. Um, so, um, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Glenda. So, Glenda, I'm going to bring up your slides now. Um, yeah, and whenever you're ready. <laughs> okay, well, <clears throat> good morning, everybody, and I'm very happy to be part of this webinar today. And hopefully um, you'll get or take something out of what I have to say in our own experience in Wexford in Our Lady of Fatima School with e twinning. Well, our school is quite small. There's 120 students approximately. And our children present mainly with mild general learning difficulties. Um, I suppose we have we started our involvement with e twinning through doing a Comenius project. Um, I hadn't heard of it before then and something landed on my desk one day and the, the story has just developed. We're now a knee twinning school. But I must say we have started off on a very, very simple level. And I think that's really what I'd like to impart with you today. How, you know, keep it simple. And, you know, when you start like that, your journey will grow and develop with knee twinning. Well, why do an knee twinning project? Do we not have enough work as teachers? Uh, for me, and for its teachers and the students in our school, it really enhances everything we do in the classroom. Um, the most important thing is that it's not extra work, that you link it to what you're already doing, uh, link it to the curriculum. It presents that you're, you know, you're learning beyond the classroom walls, believe it or not. You're learning past the walls of the school. The children are learning to be digital citizens. And, you know, especially for special education needs children, you know, their identity as Europeans is definitely developed and enhanced. OK, so like all good teachers, planning is key. Um, now, one of the oh, I'm going to talk about a particular project we did on whole school level. But when I started oh. off, I started just within my own classroom on an individual level and really I suppose I tried to identify a focus or something that was lacking in my classroom or something or some skill topic or theme that we needed to improve on within the classroom okay so if you're beginning your e-training journey maybe uh, on an individual level that's the best way to begin then as you go through your journey, uh, you know, you'll get more teachers involved, the whole school can become, become involved. And then that's when you really think about sitting down as a team, sitting down uh, with your staff or as part of your, your staff and identifying an area that the whole school can work on, improve. You know, things like in primary school level and especially with regards to special education needs, you look at SSE. You can also look at different policies at a staff level and, you know, is there something that we need to improve on? Can e-twinning enhance what we want to improve on? So on to the next slide then, Quiva. Um, planning, again, how or what do you do? If you're going to work it as individual or a whole school level, you know, gather your evidence. On a whole school level, I did surveys with different teachers, surveys, surveys with the staff. And then I created a knee twinning team where, you, where we wrote together and we shared our ideas on what we wanted to improve. We could even go a little bit of a step further and then you link it into your curriculum, link it into your yearly plan. So, I mean, it all makes sense. And then obviously you put your e twinning plan into action. And here you consider things like, how do we divide this project? How long should it last? Um, and key, key times or key, key particular times throughout the project. Look at those, 
specific activities that you want to introduce. And then at the end of it all, you can monitor, well, as you're going through it, you monitor it. And at the end of all, at the end of it all, then you evaluate the impact that has had. You know, good reflection. We're all taught how to reflect in our daily lives and how this can help us improve on different things. So this form of reflection, looking back on the positives or what didn't work within the project, and then taking it from there and growing and developing maybe another project. So what are your, your topics and themes? Well, how long is a piece of string really is what I'd like to ask. For me, I am a teacher of um, junior certain level two students. So we do priority learning units, for example, like preparing for work, uh, uh, communication and literacy, numeracy, all of those different areas. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter what you're teaching or what level you're teaching at you will find a topic or a theme, you know, that gels nicely with what you're doing within the class. And another question I'm asked is how long should it be? Well, one of the first e-training projects I did actually just lasted a month um, where I was working on letter writing with students in the class and we partnered with um, obviously Europeans and we literally hand wrote letters within the classroom and we posted them to this to the the other schools i think one was in in um italy if i remember rightly um we took a very simple picture of that letter and we uploaded it onto e-twinning so excitement of actually even for the students to receive letters was enough you know for us to want to do another one so we'll go on to the next one then, Kriva, thank you. So this is the one I'd want to, I want to talk to you about. In my school, we decided, we, we were now an e-twinning school, so we decided to do a whole school project. And the title of it was Our World of Wellbeing, Eat, Sleep, Dance, Play, Dance and Sing. A bit of a mouthful, but great fun. So, um, as I said, we're now an e-twinning school from 2018 and why we chose to do a whole school e-twinning project was, you know, to build on this whole idea of the e-twinning school. You know, your e-twinning school is not just down to one or two teachers, you know, you need to get more teachers involved. Um, not only that, um, obviously the digi digital strategy for schools, the framework, it's huge. So we wanted to look at that and how could we um, uh, use e-twinning to help us on this journey and on top of that um, we have the whole aspect of well-being huge at the moment uh, important for both staff and students and our policy needed an update so you can see there was loads of different areas that our school needed and worked uh, needed to improve on wanted to work on and we brought it all together in an e-twinning school project so how did we do it? Well, we eventually um, got together an e-twinning team. Management were very much involved. During staff meetings, we were allocated to time where we could brainstorm, do surveys, you know, to see what teachers actually wanted. And then we planned together. And I suppose this is the key word. It's all about being doing something together. You know, there's no point in being a, just a solo cowboy. You know, it's important to have your, your posse <laughs> with you. So we wrote up our, our project together, our aims, our objectives, and then everybody was able to link that into their yearly plans for the following school year. So this whole school approach, I suppose it offered us this sort of unity. You know, we had the strengths of all the team. So we had a greater sense of diversity, we had creativeness. And uh, I think we spoke about it earlier on, this whole idea of you know, collegiality, connecting, and the relationships that were formed as even being part of this e-twinning team. Um, we even went one step further and uh, we introduced this idea of peer tutoring. So people who were afraid, would I want for the want of a better word, of using their digital skills, um, you know, we developed this idea of a pineapple project. And actually I came up with this idea on a e-twinning um, trip I was on um, a few years ago. I heard another teacher talking about it. And basically a pineapple project, the pineapple is a symbol for welcome. And the pineapple project is this huge timetable we have up in our 
staff room. And we open up our classrooms or we invite other teachers to come and observe or to look at what we're doing digitally. And we use this as part of our e-training project um, in order to improve the digital technology skills of other teachers. Okay, this, uh, yeah, so this, um, this slide here, just basically it's a screenshot of the actual twin space. And the reason we did our, um, or we decided on this was of course, we wanted to enhance the whole idea of well-being within the school. Okay, so that's our aims and our objectives. So if you're starting to write it, um, then the next, the next slide is the whole organization of the project. Now this particular whole school project we did over a space of nine months, so the whole school year. Um, it was easier actually because what we did was we broke down the whole work process into monthly um, divisions. So as you can see there, we had September very, and actually I limited the amount of, um, uh, we limited the amount of partners, European projects or partners. We had four partners in it. Um, specifically so we could bring those less confident teachers along um, that they were able to observe what the rest of us were doing and to give them confidence to maybe move forward with another e-training project. So I would say in your organization of your project, planning, dividing the work per month, if it's a long one, by month, dividing it down if it's a, if it's a shorter one, for example, if you only do it for a month, what are you going to do every week? Or even you can do it as small as a weekly project. What are you going to try and achieve every day and a reasonable amount of work? Okay, so um, I've just given a few examples of, you know, it doesn't have to be high tech. This is an example of one of the activities we used in our project on wellbeing. And it was a collaborative story. So here you have your literacy already. Tick the box on literacy. Um, it also, the story was all about kindness. So we introduced it as part of our of obviously wellbeing and our anti-bullying campaign. We have an activity week every year. And basically um, students in the class and, and in the different classes across Europe um, do a picture. We say, for example, school A started with one line of the story. It came back to school B, school D added a, a C, another one, school D, another one. And we had a, a lovely story at the end of it. Um, here is another example, uh, use of Padlet and also S'more, which was a newsletter we did on the benefits of sleep as part of our wellbeing project. Okay, the next one then, Cleaver, please. And here, the students in my class, actually, this is a, a, the use of a green screen. They actually made their own um, check-in um, exercise and uh, videoed it on green screen and also distributed it to all the different classes in the school where they could practice their own mindfulness. Okay, so really in conclusion, um, I hope I've kind of shown you that, you know, e-twinning is all about fun. It's not about extra work. It's about being clever with it, linking it, planning correctly. You know, at the end of the day, um, and you can see even the benefits of it as a result of COVID-19, the amount of confidence a lot of teachers now have in teaching online. Um, you know, it can be done at an individual, a team or a whole school level. Important to identify your fo focus planning we're all 18 planners here put it into action and evaluate your impact for us doing this whole school project our digital technology skills were improved we even got a chance to allow the students to become mentors to teachers and to each other you know there was a huge great um, uh, positive impact on relationships across the board um, a greater sense of community and a greater wellness of the importance of a greater or sorry, excuse me, awareness of the importance of well-being and how lucky we are to have had that experience, which is helping us right now at this particular time. So I hope you have some sort of a sense of e-twinning and the positives from um, that presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Glenda. That was brilliant uh, to hear um, the, in detail uh, your experience of the e-twinning 
Um, we might, we'll wait for questions till the end. Um, so we might go straight to Michal if that's okay, if everybody's okay with that. Um, so Michal, I'm gonna start sharing your slides now. All right, so <clears throat> my name is Michal and uh, I'm the principal of St. Ita's Special School in Drogheda. And like Glenda, we are predominantly a school for children in the mild uh, range. We do have children with moderate learning disabilities also. Um, and we have children with uh, autism, um, Down syndrome, some behaviour issues. And roughly next year we'll have hopefully about 160 students in total. So, uh, busy. So as Glenda said, why would you want to do anything extra? Um, I was introduced to this by a, a principal colleague actually from, from the North and we began to look at it as a, as a management team. And we sat down, we created a, 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 a committee, if you want to call it that, of um, six persons. And we decided that we would meet every morning, every Thursday morning between um, 8, 10 and 8, 15 for 40 minutes before school. And everybody agreed that this is what we would do. Um, so nobody was missing any duties or anything like that. But it was a commitment, uh, no doubt about it. So we sat down, the practicalities of it, we sat down with a huge big piece of paper and we wrote down lots of things that we thought we would like to do. Simple, simple, simple things. And at the end, we realized, or we came to the realization that what we really wanted were positive outcomes for our students. And um, any of you who work in special ed will know that we have children who come in at the age of five and probably will stay with us until they're 18. And indeed, some of them make it an additional year, they may nearly be 19. That's a huge commitment from the family, from the child, but also from staff and from the school back to, back to the child. But education is not an end. Education is a means to the end. And in special education, I am very aware that our children are, and I'll use the present term, cocooned within special schools, protected. But they will leave us and they will go out into this world uh, that isn't as accepting or isn't as, 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 as caring uh, as the school environment. So you're educating your children right through school, everybody's doing it, but it really is to have them to have better skills in a life after school. So our um, project was looking at positive practical lifelong outcomes for SEN pupils, enhancing their social, their emotional, community and economic mobility within society. So there's a huge amount in that, all right? Now the difference with eTwinning and Erasmus is Ours was a professional development and learning for staff, predominantly teachers, but also special need assistants. Um, it, it was, I suppose, initially, we, we needed a lot of support. And I suppose if there's one thing you want to hear from, from me around Erasmus Plus, because if you get granted monies, you are given uh, money and you have to account for it. And that comes, there's a pressure in that. And I'll come to that in a moment. But if you want to hear one thing from me, it is that the guys who are on my screen above me, I see Dee and Thomas and there were others before, there's huge support at the end of the telephone. You know, we're not supposed to know it all when you're starting. Um, we're in a second project and we know far more now than we did then. And we now also know that we can lift the phone and we have people at the other end of the phone where we can say, look, we have an issue, we have a problem, we have a, a challenge. Um, and the support was excellent. Um, I suppose I know my slides are there, so I'll, I'll maybe just go, go to those. Um, so again, positive outcomes, but project management then. So how do you manage this? Who does it fall on to? We looked for a collaborative approach, as I said, and uh, so we put the team together. But the team didn't work in isolation. Um, the team had to get uh, our message out there to the rest of the staff. Um, you know, I have a total staff of over 80 people. Um, some of them are in and out of the school at different times, but they would want to be involved in something like this. So we had to get that information out there. 
to busy people who didn't want to do anything, who didn't want to be any more busy, they were busy enough. So how are we going to do this and how are we going to help them? So we had feedback from them and we give them feedback. So that took a little bit of time. Um, the filling out of the application form is, is a challenge, uh, but again, there are people there that can help you and assist you. Uh, and if you have, I'm a great one from mind maps. If you have a big picture and you can narrow it down, um, the, the application form becomes much easier because you have a clear focus as to where you want to be at the end. Now, I'll say this now, you might end up in a lot of different places at the end, um, some that you didn't think you would, you would find, um, but they're all hugely beneficial. And they're the add-on bits to Erasmus. So as well as our little committee, we had to set up subcommittees because we thought there were areas that were, you know, that we would take the challenge of any travel or any visits or mobilities out of the hands of our staff. So we had a, an administration section within our little committee. So I had one of the school secretaries involved in that. And they looked at, you know, um, looking at certificate, all the paperwork around Erasmus. Now this sounds, I'm, I, I can see a few of you, this might sound as if it's a hugely onerous thing. It wasn't. Once a week for 40 minutes did a huge amount and then a little WhatsApp group and we, we just communicated between us. Um, we set up participation packs for, for, for people traveling. We had copies of their passports. We had, we ensured that they all had travel insurance. We kept all that. And under GDPR, the people knew where it was kept and all of those things were all uh, uh, taken into consideration. But it was in case something went wrong, which it did. We had a member of staff who left her passport in the hotel room, uh, went to the airport, missed the flight. So we had a copy of the passport and we had all of those things um, for her and we were able to assist them. Then we were able to get back onto the hotel and book another room and all of that sort of stuff. So it sounded like a disaster, but if you ask this lady, Mandy, she would say, you know, that was actually part of the whole journey uh, as well for her. Um, the administration group also looked at the writing up of our, uh, of our uh, end um, project. A little hint as you're going along in any of these things keep a keep a diary uh, keep a note of what you're doing better to have it formalized and uh, when we come back from every one of our mobilities our staff are more than delighted to stand up in front of the rest of the staff and say this is what we learned in greece this is what we saw in greece this is what greece was like this is where greek schools were like this is what the people in the greek schools were like and of course there was a cultural element to it as well and greece is always very nice because it's warm so there was no challenge with people wanting to go to Greece. Um, so we also had a travel committee that looked at booking flights and uh, payments and um, transport fares from airports. Again, that sounds onerous, but it isn't. It really genuinely isn't. Uh, and we kept feeding that information back. The final one then, we had a group for finance. Uh, we got a substantial grant from Lergos, our first time round. And we wanted to ensure that public money, it had to be spent and it had to be accounted for. But that's good practice in any walk of life, in any walk of life. So we encouraged staff to keep receipts. We give them doc, uh, document folders to hold them. We told them what they could claim for, what they couldn't claim for. Uh, and we came to an agreement with them as to how best we would allocate uh, funding and when we would allocate it and et cetera, et cetera. And of course we had financial reporting. And then the thing that I was involved with was the looking at cultural events. Um, because a huge part of Erasmus is also the cultural element of it. Um, you know, and being, and I can say this as a, a, a Northern UK citizen, not, um, that Europe is hugely important. And um, what people are doing in your education systems are very alike in a, in a lot of ways and different in a lot of ways. But the one set of people who are the same are the children, the kids. So we wanted to see what was happening in all of these European countries and how were they assisting the children. But in that there was the cultural events. So we had an Erasmus week here where we coordinated events and uh, we had cultural uh, itineraries and we had some um, 
of the people that we met on our mobilities visited Ireland and came to Drogheda and we give them a whole cultural tour of Drogheda. Um, we had two guys that we met from Germany and they wanted to go to the Guinness factory. So far be it from me not to assist them in that. Um, so they saw some of the cultural uh, parts of Ireland. We took them to, 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 to different places. Um, now that was outside of the Air Erasmus budget. That was them coming to visit us. But what it highlighted was for them and for us and for everybody involved was that um, there was a collegiality. And I heard Glenda saying that not only a collegiality within the school, but a collegiality with the people that we've met, we met on our journeys. I'm in a number of WhatsApp groups from people that I met right across Europe. Um, and it's amazing the information that I'm getting even at this COVID crisis time about what they're doing for their children, which is another benefit of all of this, because you're getting another perspective. Um, now I could rant about Erasmus because I, I thoroughly enjoyed it uh, and our staff thoroughly enjoyed it. And we learned a huge amount from the big questions about what young people do and how we can assist them when they move on from schools to the little things that we learned in schools like in Finland, for instance, in their primary schools, they have a, a, a picture on the back of every uh, school door, which we have in special education with a picture timetable, even for the children who are verbal even for the children who read, even for the children who don't have any learning disabilities. It's there, it's, it's, in, it's in visual form for them. We brought that to our school. We were in another school where we saw a, 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 what we call our Amber Room, just a place where kids can take 10 minutes, no technology, no education, no books. They can just go in and downtime, relax. And we have found a huge change in behavior uh, with our children from it. And again, we saw that uh, as a by the by on one of our Erasmus. So that, that was really nothing to do with what we were looking for, but it ended up being a hugely important thing. Um, so the other learning as well, and uh, that you will find is that we learn that what we do um, in, in education in Ireland stands up there equal with anything in any of the countries across Europe. Like we went to Finland and we saw the Finnish system that's held up there as a beacon. And yet there were parts of it that we looked at and thought that wouldn't work in Ireland because a different culture. Um, you know, we found it to be a, a cold culture in many respects, not just the weather. But we found it to be um, different. And sometimes it's held up there to be you know, a very inclusive system. We found over there it wasn't inclusive. We didn't see the special needs children. They were not in the mainstream school. And if they were, they were separate to the children in the mainstream school. And yet it's held up as one of these beacons of, of, of inclusion. Now that may be the area we were in, but that's what we saw. But what we did learn was that what we do and how we do it and the added value that we in this country put on pastoral care, and we now call it mindfulness, but the looking after and love and care of our children, that isn't measured in sometimes in, in w, uh, whole school evaluations, that we do that part really, really, really well. And we do the education part really well also. So there was a real sense when we came back of, you know what, we're as good as any and better than a lot and we have and we can we can stand and puff our chests out and say you know we do a good job and um, and to see that on a european scale was fantastic so i sent snas as well you know and they came back and they said wow you know we were telling them the things we were doing in our school and they were going oh but how, how would you do that you know how do you deal with those behavior problems how do you deal with this what is low arousal what is the low arousal approach now I'm, I'm, I'm going off on a wee bit of a tangent, but, but the point I'm making is that there was a huge learning right across our, our project. And it wasn't just on the project outcome um, that we set out to achieve. We did achieve that, so much so that we're involved with another group called ASPABER, in, in, and it's a research team across five European countries, looking at almost exactly what we started out to look at two and a half years ago the outcomes for special needs children when they leave school at 18. And, and well, COVID has put a bit of a, a dampener on it, but we are working uh, on that as well. 
finally, I'm going to go back to it. If you're listening to me and you're thinking, that's a lot of stuff, my God, how did they do that? Who would we get to do that? It's amazing who you'd get to do it. Um, you know, but if you are, it is changed, drip it in nice and easy. The one thing I would say, I don't know whether I have school management in front of me or whatever, you must get school management on side. Here, we're very lucky, myself and the deputy principal, we wanted this. We, 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 we felt we had a great product in this school. We had a great education uh, uh, facility and we wanted to see what was happening elsewhere. And I know from talking to Glenda, she has an excellent school as well. And there is nothing, to, there is nothing not to be gained from doing it. Um, my late father used to say, never regret the things you did, just the chances you didn't take. And doing Erasmus is, I think is a great chance but you must get management, you must get a management buy-in because they, that, that's an important part of it. Um, I'll be in a group later on, I'll take questions. Uh, I know I've ranted a bit longer, sorry, Quiva, than I probably was supposed to. <laughs> um, so that's, that's, that's uh, Erasmus from me. Thank you. And that was brilliant, Michal, and not at all, that was interesting in every single beat. <laughs> um, and I'm sure people have loads of questions and I'm sure they're various as well. So um, we'll do our best to answer them as best we can in these smaller group settings. So um, Carmel, you're gonna do that first. Yeah, I'm actually going to even reshuffle them out into two groups because we have smaller numbers here. So I might just do two groups instead of four. It might be better conversation than just one or two in a group. So bear with me for a minute. Um, if anyone asks questions, maybe one or two questions now, will I just up the breakout rooms? Perfect, yeah, so I'll, just, I'll check the chat, but if anyone wants to raise a hand, um, we can hear a question. And yes, you can type your questions as well. Um, Dee, yeah, do you want to unmute? Or sorry, I'll unmute you, sorry. <laughs> just a quick question that'll be beneficial to everyone, Michal. I saw one of your challenges was dissemination and getting the time to disseminate to staff on the mobilities. How in general did you do the dissemination of the learning from your project? Okay, so that was multifaceted for us. So we had the paperwork part of it, which again, wasn't that onerous. People normally did it on their way home on a flight from wherever it was they were. And we encouraged them to do that. So that was individual, but they would sit normally together on a plane and, 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 do, and do those things. Uh, obviously, we encouraged them to take uh, lots of pictures uh, and anything of, of interest. And then when they came back, we took the, the, the paper copies and we spoke through it with the team that went. Um, we got them then in a Crow Park hour to sit and talk about their overall gains and to put together a little slideshow. And then in another Crow Park hour, we would have a 15 minute slideshow of what was uh, achieved on our outcomes, what we wanted our outcomes, but also the other very important cultural things. And then the little anecdotal stuff that they learned when they were away as well. Um, you know, and just their stories about it. it, it and, and at that time, it allowed us to have a bit of a laugh and be together as, don't I have some secretary? Look at that. It's probably like Can I just look at it? <laughs> and my coffee. There's two sugars. <laughs> two sugars, yeah. that's lovely. Um, sorry about that. But um, it allowed us also to, to come together and, and to have a, uh, you know, and to, and to tell those little stories with things that happened. And it was a great, um, it's great team building. Mm. Uh, you know, but the dissemination part, there was the formal part. Then there was the, 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 the slideshows and the information we gained from that. And that then went into our final. Now, we also obviously sent it to other stakeholders. The Board of Management got it. Uh, I'm involved in eight schools here in Drogheda in a forum. We disseminated the information to them. Um, you know, we also put some information in the paper, you know, as much as we could, that we had visits to wherever it was, and we had the staff a picture when they were away, and we put it in the local paper and things like that. Um, which has a lot of pluses as well for any mm -hmm. school leaders there, you know, uh, that the school is, is, is not just in the community, it is part of a larger community mm -hmm. and it's part of the European community. And I know that sounds a bit, mm, but it, 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 you know, and we were very proud to raise our, our Erasmus flag. We had a very, very good day. Great. All right.
So we're going to go into the breakout rooms now. So we'll have two breakout rooms. Um, these are just so people can ask questions in a smaller group and have a little bit more of a discussion. Um, Tomas and, and Priva, if you could open up your Google Slides, well, that'd be great. So you can kind of write that in your part. Um, we'll be in here for time. Is, we start off late, so we'll say 10 minutes in here and then we'll all go into a larger group then. So I'm going to put you in now. So if everyone can accept it when I see a, this dialogue box opening there, just to join in. Emma, if you want to join as well, is this the group chat going to be in the smaller groups as well then?
everyone's getting back in, I think. Um, I think I think after a few minutes, a minute, people are kicked out anyway to into this main room anyway. So hopefully we haven't lost anyone in the way. Uh, I think that might be everyone anyway. Um, so I'm not sure if there are any more questions in terms, I know we did end it up, I'm not sure if people wanted to recap what's happening in each other's room and do that like, so that the whole group can see, hear what was happening in each group or what was the main discussions from each group. And then after that, then we can have final questions and evaluation and close. So in our room, I suppose there was there was a question about each winning and a question about Erasmus Plus, really. So it was perfectly divided. <laughs> and from the each winning side, uh, we just had um, a teacher asking about the twin space, about how many partners should be in a project, um, how who and how sets sets up the twin space and how long and how it's work it works that way. So we just shared. Um, I just shared my screen and went through. A twin space so if anyone else is interested in that I can stick around after this and do that for anyone who wants to see that um, and then there was also an Erasmus Plus question do you might be best place to say what was said or Michal I can't remember the was there hold on sorry just in relation to linking e-twinning if you're going to do, do job shadowing do you have to have it by an e-twinning partner when explaining you have that that's great but you don't have to you know, they don't have to go hand in hand. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, in the Erasmus Plus uh, breakdown room, uh, we had many experienced people uh, with Erasmus uh, and also newcomers. Uh, so we went through key action one and key action two, which is basically staff focused mobility projects for key action one and staff and pupils uh, mobility uh, projects in Key Action 2. Uh, but we also have some feedback from, from the experience of people and some nice pieces of advice uh, that, that we got that uh, it's nice to get people on board uh, from the beginning if you are planning to start engaging with a project on Erasmus Plus and also in training to start uh, the discussion with people from your school from the start and um, so they can maybe you, you will be managing, you will be coordinating the project, but that doesn't mean that you don't have a constant feedback and sharing and, and, and sharing the activities uh, with your colleagues um, and, and also with the learners, bringing the learners on board because we have, they have so much uh, to contribute to these projects more than anyone else. Carmel? Sorry. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions or anything like that or anything not with we'll move on to evaluation then? You're going to share that, Carmel, are you? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to use a Mentimeter poll again for this one. So um, if people can go to... Um, oh, what? Sorry. Those are too much screens up. Um, so you can go to Mentimeter and go to webinar um, Mentimeter and type in the code 122661. That'd be great. So I'll have it up here now. So if people can just go to menti.com and use the, the code 122661. And once, we'll, once everyone's in, we can start. So if you have any issues logging in, just give me a share so let me know. Okay, so with Menti as well. So this is an actually really very good um, tool we were discussing in last week's one as well. It's um, a great tool to use if you want to have training or even activities with, along with your students. It's quite interactive in terms of how you can work together on it. So uh, the first question here is, how would you rate the following? So quality of program, quality of inputs, quality of practical applications. So this is a rating one, so you can use um, your 
Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Now, as well, please note as well, after um, the webinar, we will be sending out resources as well, and the recording will be put up on our website, and any other resources or the presentations also be there. So, and then we can have follow up. If you have any questions, you can contact me or any of the Nergus team, um, and they'll help you out. So, give people another minute to do that when we go to the next one. So this question then is, oh, not sure what happened there. All right. Um, what element of training did you find most useful? Useful. So this is just words. So if you type in some one words um, to describe what you felt most useful, that'd be great. minute. Now see if you don't want to feel you don't want to give an input to it, that's no problem either. Okay. So we can see here that this is the experience that's come up as one of the most important. Like for us in webinar Wednesday we did use this as a tool to for people to engage with. So we said it's not just a, a recording that we're putting on a website, but it's really a tool for people to have that interactive nature to ask questions and have the opportunity to talk to people who've done this and also to us as well and to get the questions um, out there and chat. So it's like, like Phoebe mentioned, it was an informal conversation over a cup of coffee. Okay, next one. Well, so this is for us as well. We just really want to focus on like how we can help and support like the different fields during COVID and like what other teams do, would you think we support you during um, to work online and to transition your work to online. So if you have any questions, um, ideas here or other topics you'd like to address, add them up here and we, we'll look at whether we need, we're, if this is successful, we'll end up doing another eight weeks of this. And um, we like, so it would be great to hear from feedback about what kind of teams topics you think is most relevant to you and your work. And if you don't have any, that's okay too. Okay, so you yeah, definitely can look at um, doing kind of the more practical elements of it as well. People are looking at this. Give people another minute. And I'll move on to the next one. So this is more just some feedback as well. Obviously, we're all kind of transitioning into this world of online uh, working. So for us as well, we just, what would you think would improve our trainings for next time as well, if you feel they're anything? Um, if you don't, that's no problem either. We will also stay online for, for another five minutes or so. So if anyone has any questions, we can take answers in the, for the next five minutes as well. I know we're kind of over our time. Um, unfortunately, because we ran a little bit late, it's the nature of the game. Um, we will yeah, stay for another five minutes to answer any questions people may have. And you do have our email address as well if, that's, if you need it. So I'll give you another minute.
Okay, so like me and I know um, we didn't get we didn't go into much detail of our development plus program today or the training elements, but if it is something that people want to learn how to develop their kind of European development plan, we can look into doing definitely other webinars on that. Yeah, uh, yeah, and we have a lovely template that we we could use on another session on the European development plan and the key questions, and we could use experienced people again who have done it already. Yeah. So we can definitely do that. Yeah. So um, it might not even be going to this webinar Wednesday. We might just do a workshop on that. So exactly. um, if people are interested, please let us know. And we'll let people, we'll contact people about the, uh, the upcoming trainings as well. The other thing, sorry, just to say, lads, we don't know got yet we're going to have a second deadline for K1. It depends on loads of different scenarios. But if it is something we would be getting in touch with you about and everything you've asked there about a one to two year plan, how to write an application form is something we do cover off. Again, we've no decision on that yet. And any other comments this year? So, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much to Michal and Glenda as well, who um, did an excellent job. Uh, of taking us through their experiences and uh, no better two people to be <laughs> leading this webinar. <laughs> so thank you very much, guys. Glenda, I'll see you around. Okay. Yes, definitely. I think we've made uh, a good partnership there, uh, Michal. I'd love yeah, to I'd work with you again in the future. Look forward to working with you again. Um, there is, Tomas, this is for Tomas and for the Edwina, I have asked when will there be a decision on Rasmus Plus applications? So when will people be informed? I responded there between two and three months. Perfect. Um, if any of other questions or any queries, uh, we'll say goodbye. Um, thanks again for joining in. Um, hopefully it was worthwhile. If you have any feedback you want to send over email, please do. And please keep looking up on our website as well because we will be hosting more of these online webinars as well to help support beneficiaries and newcomers engaging in the program. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank guys. you guys. Thank you. Thanks guys. Take care. Bye. 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 Thanks guys. Bye. Good to see you. See you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Oh, thank you. Thanks. Bye Cleva. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, you very much. Thank you. See you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.